This is Mark Tobias with Dr. Vance Thompson in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. He's an advanced ophthalmologist. And Vance, very briefly, why don't you tell us your background? You're board certified. You were one of the original participants in it for the Food and Drug Administration for laser trial, laser surgery trials 30 years ago. Briefly, tell my readers, who are you? Well, um, after my degree in chemistry and medical school, and I did a residency in ophthalmology and then a fellowship in advanced laser and implant surgery of the eye uh, in Kansas City. Had the honor of getting involved early in the FDA monitored clinical trials on advanced laser and implant surgery there and carried on those clinical trials here and have been doing that for the past 20 years. Just finished my 31st FDA monitored trial on advanced eye surgery technology. Okay, so you're clearly one of the world experts. Yes. Tell me, we're, we want to talk about smartphones and the small screens. Good or bad as far as health and your eyes, as far as reading, fine print, and age groups? Well, as far as any permanent problems with your health, uh, I really don't have, in general, any worries there. Uh, you may get eye strain when you use them, and you'll have some other issues that we're going to talk about. But as far as hurting your eyes, uh, in general, we would think the opposite. You're actually exercising your eyes uh, when you're using a smartphone. Okay, so explain that to me. When I, and obviously I'm over 40, so I shouldn't be reading the small print on my iPhone or my Android to begin with without reading glasses, but I do. So when I do that, and, and I'm reading a lot, like the New York Times, for example, when I look at my big screen TV for like 15 minutes, it's blurry. Why? Well, first of all, if you're having early difficulties uh, reading, typically it happens in the 40s. Right. Uh, we have our lens that sits right behind our pupil, and when we look at a distance, it's flat. And when we look up close, it zooms in or gets more globular and that's how we read. We call that process accommodation. We actually start to lose that ability uh, in the 30s, but it really starts to manifest or show up in our 40s, and people that never needed glasses now need reading glasses, or people that are into contacts need reading glasses over them, or people that are in glasses end up needing read glass, reading glasses in their glasses, what we call bifocals, and that happens in our 40s. Now, if you are in your 40s uh, or 50s and you're having difficulties seeing that phone, you can push it. You can get that lens that is getting stiff and is having a difficult time. You can oftentimes get it to read it, and it doesn't hurt your eyes to do that. You may feel eye strain, but at some point in time when it gets too difficult, that's when you want to use reading help uh, glasses or bifocals. Well, actually, I'm in my 60s, and I still read without glasses. So I'm lucky. Well, you're lucky, and you'll find people in their 60s that sometimes can do it. It's rare. Oftentimes, they have a little bit of nearsightedness associated with it, and it's a small amount, not enough to bother their distance too much. Uh, but yes, you're lucky. So would you say, so uh, the elasticity of your lens changes as you age? That's the exactly. takeaway. Exactly. It gets more stiff. Okay. So can you extend that ability to read without glasses or easier if you exercise your eyes by forcing to focus on small print that, that forces the elasticity to alter and and you keep doing that is so what you're telling me is that's helpful it's not hurtful that's exactly right we call that term of the lens stiffening presbyopia but it is one of those things you can delay by working your eyes and sometimes People even will use a pencil or a pen or something to focus at arm's length and then they'll hold it out there and they'll zoom in and their lens will work and then they'll zoom out and their lens will relax and they'll zoom in and their lens will work. We call it pencil push-ups. But you can actually do it with your little PDA and you might have to hold it out there and you might find as you're into your reading session you can bring it in six inches right. or eight inches but that's actually working your lens and delaying presbyopia or the need for reading glasses. So it's a good deal? It's a good thing. So so tell me about tearing. A lot of people read a lot on their smartphones and they, they stare and we talked about then there's you blink less. Right. 
and so when you blink less there's less tearing obviously so what's the impact of this well one of the things that you want to realize is the vast majority of the crispness of, of our vision happens right where the air meets our tear film that's the majority of the focusing power of the eye right where the air meets our tear film and so when we do things where we're concentrating reading driving using a computer oftentimes our blink reflex goes down 30 percent in our world we talk about a term called tear film breakup time the outer part of our tear film has kind of a slightly greasy aspect to it to help lessen tear film evaporation if you if that layer is deficient and you're not blinking your tears evaporate and it creates little dry spots almost like when you're driving and you look at your windshield right when it starts to rain the windshield wipers are going and there's little dry spots you don't see out that windshield very crisp and clear until it gets to be a nice smooth skim and it's the same way with our tear film and that's why we tell people to blink more or use artificial tears when they're doing these things uh, uh, that involve a lot of concentration no health no adverse mm -hmm. health effects of no it doesn't that doesn't hurt your eyes it sometimes scares people because they're experiencing this blur but if you can blink away that kind of blur that's a tear film issue you don't blink away bad things <laughs> we try to yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there any other impacts with uh, small screens that you've seen in your practice or that you would envision could be a problem I don't think there's really a problem with small screens. I think the issue is what's the font size. And, and, and I think that's where you know you can create the font at a level that's comfortable for you. One of the other things that happens when you hold things close, because there's three things that happen when we read. One, our pupil gets smaller. Two, our lens uh, gets more globular to zoom in. And three, our eyes turn in, they converge. There's a number of eye tests in the app stores, both on Android and on iPhone. And I just had you run through one of them. What do you, first of all, you're unaware, you're unaware of these. Yes. What, you have them in the office, but you haven't seen them on a smartphone. Right. What do you think? I was impressed. I mean, to be able to test the, the vision and the sharpness and the color vision uh, through an app is impressive. I, I may add, though, it doesn't replace needing to see your eye doctor every year to check your eye pressure and make sure you don't have glaucoma and those types of things. But just as a pure visual test to see how you're doing, impressive. As, as far as just a screening? Just a screening. Would you, would you recommend it? Oh, yeah. I think it can be a great way to monitor your vision between doctor exams. And how, last question, how often should everybody be seeing you as far as an ophthalmologist for checks? You know, if you're under the age of 40 and you have healthy eyes and you've had good checks, every couple of years. Above the age of 40, every year you want to have your eye pressure checked because glaucoma can damage your sight and you don't know what's happening. It's painless. It's kind of like high blood pressure can damage your heart and your brain and, you, and it's painless. You want to have your blood pressure checked by your family doctor or internist every year after the age of 40. Same with your eye pressure by your ophthalmologist or optometrist. Any other critical tests for eyes? Um, it's good to have your retina looked at uh, and your lens. The same lens that gets stiff can also get cloudy and become a cataract. So you do want a good eye exam uh, also. Okay, Vance, thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you.